In 2012, a deep learning breakthrough shook the world by outperforming every architecture that came before it, proving the potential of deep learning. The model that started this was AlexNet, an eight-page paper that ultimately won the ImageNet competition in 2012. Proposed by three researchers, Alex Krzyzewski, Ilya Siskewer, and Jeffrey Hinton, this architecture was the turning point for the artificial intelligence revolution to start again. Alex and Ilya were Jeffrey's PhD students. Jeffrey Hinton is the most influential figure in the field of AI. He won the Turing Award in 2018 and the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2024. Alex went to Google as a researcher, and Ilya later on co-founded OpenAI. The architecture that they proposed was based on convolutions, but they introduced and applied some clever techniques, particularly seven key changes that boosted the performance and the accuracy by a huge margin. We'll discuss all of them one by one in this video. Our goal here in this video is to understand these concepts, and later on when you read the paper, you're able to visualize. By now, you might have seen many videos on convolutions and have a very good understanding of how they work. But let me briefly recap what convolution is in a slightly different manner from the perspective of this paper really quickly. The main idea of convolutional neural networks are convolutional filters. The target is to learn different filters that pick up different features from the image. After learning the filters, Upon convolution with the original image, it only reacts to those specific learned features. Let's say we have an image. Now, if we wanted to detect horizontal edges, then what we do is we take a filter, which is a horizontal edge detector, and convolve it with the image. It is basically a pointwise multiplication and their linear sum. So upon convolution, we get an image where the horizontal lines are detected. If you look at the image on the right and focus on the back wall behind the cat, near the wall you can see the horizontal lines are darker. Basically, this indicates that the horizontal lines were detected. So we can treat this as feature maps. Now, if we look at the architecture, we'll see that in the first layer itself, we need 96 of such feature maps, which are different kinds of shape and texture detectors. So these are the filters we have to train and learn through the network. Initially, we start with random noise filters. Then, through gradient descent and backpropagation, gradually we learn different feature maps that respond to different features of the image. That's simply the whole idea of convolutions. Now, with the basic groundwork being set and the intuition in mind, we can move on forward to the actual architecture. There are two stages in the architecture, one at the top and one at the bottom. Don't worry, it's just a design choice that we'll look at later on. Let's just look at only one part and understand the architecture. If we look closely, it is the same as CNN's but with more layers and clever design choice. There are 96 feature maps in the first layer, 256 in the second layer. 384 in the third and fourth layer, and 256 in the fifth layer. The sixth and seventh layers are fully connected layers with 4,096 densely connected neurons each, and the final layer has 1,000 neurons with softmax applied, which converts everything into probability. Till now we have looked at the architecture. Moving on forward, let's look at the changes that made this architecture work so good. The big picture idea I want you to take away from this video is a good understanding of the techniques used. Because if you want to use these ideas yourselves, having a good understanding will give you a genuine edge. Now, let's begin with data pre-processing. The researchers took all the images from the ImageNet dataset and resized them to 256 by 256 dimensions. But, the input dimension to the model they kept as 224 by 224. By doing this, they got multiple images from one image. So they randomly cropped 224 by 224 images from the 256 by 256 image. Then they rotated and translated some images, 
They also performed RGB intensity alteration, which increased the number of input data points further. This was a big contributor to the improved accuracy. One major thing I want you to keep in mind is having more number of layers gives you bigger receptive field. Feature maps of different sizes captures features in different dimensions, which is an advantage for us. In the case of deep neural networks, having deeper layers automatically gives us that advantage. Oftentimes we take this property for granted, but it is a really powerful idea. Try to get an intuitive understanding of this. Let's look at the diagram and try to understand. One pixel of the 3 cross 3 filter has a receptive field of 3 cross 3 in the previous layer. And as we convolve it throughout the 5 cross 5 filter, it's visible that the 3 cross 3 filter sees the whole information of 5 cross 5 filters of the previous layer through convolution. Similarly, for 5 cross 5 with a stride of 4, it sees the information of the whole 11 cross 11 filter. So having multiple layers is like having filters of different sizes, which learns features hierarchically. A simple thing that they did was, instead of non-overlapping pooling, they used overlapping pooling, which had more structural information that helped the architecture perform better. If we look at it closely, this is quite self-explanatory. The next change was the optimizer. The optimizer that was used to update the weights of the feature maps was the Atom Optimizer. It is one of the best optimizers out there. The inspiration of this came straight from Newtonian physics. The idea is, while performing minimization on the loss function, if you are stuck in a local minima, then just give it push by giving it a bit more velocity, so that if it is stuck in a local minima, it can escape and reach to the global minima faster. In the visualization, you can see that the red point is reaching to the global minima the fastest, with a bit of oscillation. It's more clear in the visualization on the right. This choice of optimizer made the training faster. The activation function they chose was the ReLU activation function. ReLU speeds up the training process. Unlike sigmoid or hyperbolic tangent or tanh, ReLU does not saturate in the positive domain. It keeps on increasing linearly, which allowed the model to achieve convergence faster. The standardization technique that they used was local response normalization, which normalized the pixel values of each image according to this formula. The other benefit we get by normalization is, it reduces the numerical value of pixel intensity, which makes the computation much faster. Unlike the previous architectures, where they used only black and white filters for convolution, AlexNet used all three channels. They performed individual convolution with each channel and added them up to get a single feature map. This is in total one operation. They used 96 such operations for the first layer, 256 for the second layer, and so on. This was helpful because now these feature maps contained more structural information related to different color channels. This is sort of the visual scope of the number of filters used. One more thing that they did was they introduced dropouts, randomly switched off certain parameters while the weight updates in the feed forward network at the end of the architecture. It had two implications. One was it reduced the number of trainable parameters. And the second was they increased the robustness of the model. So these are pretty much the design choices they made before training. It's a bit hard to imagine the total number of parameters involved, but let's do a bit of math so that you can work it out later on if you want. Because nowadays, all the models are introduced by the number of parameters they have. So it's always good to understand how they are calculated. Here we're going to look at number of trainable parameters. This is the formula that is used for calculating number of parameters in each layer. This formula is consistent for all sort of neural networks. The plus one term is for the bias, which is also a trainable parameter. So putting in the numbers for the first layer, we see that the total number of trainable parameters in the first layer is 34,994. Similarly, we see the number of parameters for other layers as well in the table on the left. The total number of trainable parameters is just the sum of all parameters in every layer together. The total number of trainable parameters for AlexNet were 
around 62 million. It was huge back then to train a 62 million parameter model. So, they used the technique of model parallelism to reduce training time. Hinton and his team had access to two RTX 580 GPUs, each having a VRAM of 3 gigabytes. So they split the model layers across two GPUs and trained parallelly, which significantly reduced the training time. In the paper, they have mentioned that it took them around five to six days to train on the GPU cluster using parallel compute. In a recent interview, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang revealed that AlexNet played a pivotal role in shaping NVIDIA's AI strategy. Now let's look at the results that we all have been waiting for. So all these efforts taken actually improved the results by a huge margin. They were able to reduce the error from 25.8% to 16.4%, which was a big jump. They plotted the top five probabilities for each test example and found that the model was able to find sensible relationships in the image space and was able to recognize complex structures that distinguish different classes. And in most cases, it was giving correct predictions. Also, the other probabilities, rather than the top one, was actually close enough to the top probability. If we look at leopard example, the top prediction is leopard, which is correct. But the other probable predictions are jaguar, cheetah, snow leopard, and Egyptian cat which are actually close relatives. So the model was learning semantic relations indeed. But for an image with multiple classes, the problem of assigning what was in that image was there. For the example with the dog, it predicted cherry, which was not totally wrong because there were cherries in the foreground. Although for humans also, this might have been a hard image to label. To understand what the network learned, they did another clever thing. Using dimensionality reduction and clustering technique, they took single class clusters and plotted their nearest neighbors. Looking at the elephant images, we can see the nearest neighbor images are also elephant images, which meant the network learned meaningful semantic relations for each class. Because of this, it was able to classify elephants with different poses. Plotting out the 96 feature maps in the first layer they found that the feature maps were learning small shapes and textures. The feature maps on the left were trained on the first GPU, which learned the shapes, and the feature maps on the right were trained on another GPU, which learned textures. The researchers weren't able to describe why training on separate GPUs learned different kind of structure. Theoretically, they should have been similar in nature. Looking at the graph, we can see that before 2012, the drop in error rate was significantly small, around 2.4%. But in 2012, they achieved a drop of 9.4%. And after that, the trend continued to decrease following their path. And by 2015, the error rate went down to 3.5%, achieving lower error rate than humans. From an understanding standpoint, our understanding of how the networks learn stopped near about AlexNet. After that, as the depth of the networks grew deeper and deeper, we lost our ability to understand them. As a fun fact, we started to address the networks as it. But before ending this video, I would like to say it's always a good idea to look at Codebase. Don't worry, I'm not going to go into super details. Just try to get the visual understanding on how things are playing out, so that if you code it up yourself, you find everything to be logically sound. Looking at the code, we can see how simple the structure is. As of now, the original source code has been made public for AI interpretability research. I will add the link in the description down below for you guys to check it out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share your thoughts in the comment section. A subscribe to the channel would be heartwarming.